Okay, hello, hello. All right, hello. Uh, okay. Hello, hello. Good morning, thank you. And Ken, good morning, oh, that's awesome. And I totally see you guys, that's great, it's great, thank you. I'm gonna say, can I just confirm, can you hear me? Can someone confirm whether you can hear me? Yes, okay, great, great, great. Yes. Right. Great, oh, and that was double, all right, this is great, okay. Um, so let me, oh, more people coming, hold on a second. What just happened? Oh, and someone raised it. Wait a minute. Sorry, sorry. I'll get you one. Okay, and there's a there's a hand raised. Is that just the hand raised? Does that mean yes, you can hear me, or is there a hand raised with a question? Oh, oh okay. you have a question. Oh, oh, okay. Let me say um, let me say hello to every. Well, okay. Question, question. Yes, question. Yeah, it's really quick. Sorry. Um, I saw that you just graded the the homework, so I just wanted to know since you didn't finish um going over it. Is it okay if we submit the corrections um, when you're done? Definitely. Oh, no, it's okay no matter what. I'm going to talk about that, but definitely, okay. yes. The answer is yes, definitely. Okay. You can get all the points still, yes. Um, okay. okay, yeah, no, that, um, okay. So let me say hello to everybody. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yes, good morning, Alyssa. Thank you. Good morning, Jayla. Hello, Charlie. Good morning, Lakshmi. Uh, thank you, Trent. Hello. Yes, that's awesome. Um, thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you, Jayla. Th uh, good morning, Saad. Good morning, Vivian. And I'm still not saying all the names correctly. And thank you for that question. I think that was Farouk, I think. Um, and so good morning, Farouk. I think, was that Farouk who just asked the question? Or is it Julie? Wait, who, uh, who, who did just ask the question? I'm sorry. Was that Farouk or Julian? Oh, yes, it was me. Okay, all right, great, great. So hello, Farouk. Hello, Julian. If I didn't say hello, who else didn't I say? I think that's, oh, Noel, I didn't say. Good morning, Noel. Oh, video, that's awesome. Good morning, Daniela. If I didn't say, wait, I feel like, hello. All right, wait. Um, and good morning, Noel. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, I think that, and Farouk, okay. Yeah. Who didn't I say? Okay, I think that's it. Right, Alyssa, Jayla, Charlie, Lakshmi, Char, Jay, Saad, Vivian, Farouk, Newell, Daniela. Right, okay, good to see everybody. Alyssa, okay, good to see everybody. Okay, couple, of, and everybody's doing fine. I know you just, I know you, oh, more people are coming. Hold on a second. I know some of you just got numbers back. And some of you don't like the numbers. Don't worry, the, the overarching thing of everything is, like you can always get all the points back. The, like no matter what, like, all of everything is a work in progress, except for exams. I mean, but everything is like practice for the exams. Everything is a work in progress. Everything is drafts. The idea is that each and every one of you can, as long as you want to, and as long as you have time, you can keep resubmitting anything until you get all the 20 points or all the whatever points. As Basically, as long as you want, like honestly, as long as you, I mean, at worst, maybe since at some point in the semester, maybe toward the end, like after the midterm or before the final, I might say, okay, I think we're way past homework one at this point, guys, like I'm taking down the link or something like that. But believe me, certainly until the midterm, I mean, because, you know, the midterm will cover all of this stuff that we're doing that certainly by the time we get to the midterm, you still have time to revise the homeworks. And then you'll just have to make a judgment call, whether you're more concerned about the points on the homeworks or studying or whatever, that'll be on, you know, um, but no, the, you're, it's not about rushing. Like this is to everybody. I mean, welcome back. I know I haven't seen you in a while and I know this week's gonna be another funny week. And I know it's a little bit jostling to get a number right before you enter class. And that was the case many of you. The number is not meant to be jostling. It's if you got anything less than a 20, even if you got a nine, which a lot of people did, by the way, if you got a nine on either of them works, that does not mean you failed. Like I, I know that's less than 50%, but these are not, these are not percentages. If you got a nine out of the 20, it doesn't mean you're failing the class by any means. It also doesn't mean that I'm sitting there thinking like this person doesn't know anything. It also doesn't mean that I didn't notice that you probably had a lot of correct answers. Like it, it doesn't mean you don't know physics or whatever. It means I'm teaching you how to do things a certain way so that you'll be prepared to do it that way for the exams. And if you got a nine, for example, out of 20 is not a criticism. And a lot, again, let me say a lot of people got nines. I'm not sitting here going like, what's wrong with this class? No way. It always happens. 
on the first few assignments. If you got a nine or something like that, it just means there's still 11 points to go. Like if you want the rest of the 11 points, like pay attention today and tomorrow and see how to get them. And there's no, and you can turn them in tonight or tomorrow or whenever, like the, okay, like all of you, you have as much time as you need to just keep doing stuff. The only limit is that like work piles up and eventually it becomes stressful. And, that, and that's why we have deadlines and that's why there's an order. But no, I will keep taking things and, and believe I, some. And by the way, some of you, I want to say this also on homework. And we're going to get back to going over the homework, like in a minute. Like, I know I haven't seen you in a while. So just hello, hello. And I wanted this to be friendly. I don't want you to like walk into class right as you get a grade that you think is bad. It's not a bad grade. It's an encouragement that there's still more work to do. Um, also, let and we're going to go back to the material. I know. And some of you are thinking like, my God, we haven't even gotten like, how did I already get a bad grade on homework two? He hasn't even gone over homework two yet or whatever. Like, we're going to start getting to that today, I think. But also, please know, most of you where you're losing points or not getting the points, it's not necessarily because you didn't use the right physics equation or you get the right physics answer. In, 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 I mean, in some cases, you didn't get the right answer. But it's because I have a specific set of instructions of how to do these things that I do want people to follow. It's kind of like a scientific method for doing homeworks. And I'm sure that in many cases, for some of you, if you're already getting the right answer, but you're not doing my methods and I'm taking off points anyway, which totally happened. So you, you if I were in your shoes, I would be sitting there thinking like, is this guy, like, what is he, a kindergarten teacher? Like I got the right answer. Why is he breaking my back? like taking off points for like not having a diagram when I obviously showed I could get the right answer even without a diagram. The re And that happened in a lot of cases, okay? And I'm gonna go over it today. Mostly what we're gonna learn that couple of days is like really what it is I'm looking for in these homeworks, more so than any physics that you're missing. But let me please encourage you, if you've ever heard that physics is hard, it does get hard, right? Like it may or may not feel hard right now, but physics can get hard, it can get, if, whether it's during the middle of this course or physics 204, you can start getting things in physics where you look like, like assignments or research papers or exams or projects or whatever. You can start getting things in physics where you look at them and you're like, I don't even freaking know what this thing is asking. Like, I have no idea what to do. Often that's a reaction that people have. They will look at something and go, I have no idea what to do. And it might even been right after or someone even taught a class on the topic. They can still be like, I have no idea what to do. What I'm trying to do is show you the things that you do when you have no idea what to do. They will feel like a waste of time to many of you right now when you feel like you do know what to do. And I respect that. I'm like, I'm totally serious. I know that many of you can get the right answers to homework one without following my methods. And so you're sitting there thinking, you might be sitting there thinking, if I can get the right answer without following your stupid methods, like why do I need your stupid methods? But the reason is the methods are the things to rely on when you can't just get the right answer, or you might even not know what the question is, or you don't even know how to begin, which is a complaint that a lot of people make a lot at a certain point in physics. They get a question, they're like, I don't even know how to begin. What I'm trying to show everybody is what you do is how to begin, even when you don't know how to begin, or even when you don't know what the answer is. The only way to figure out these methods is to apply them in cases first, where we might have a clue. We're trying to see what our mind does when we do have a clue, so that when we don't have a clue, our mind has something to do to get there. That's called research scientist uh, science, right? And remember, ultimately, all of you are here, because you ultimately, in one way or another, want or are aspiring to be actual scientists, right? And I don't mean that, kind of, I mean, I mean that for real, which means you're actually aspiring to be the kind of people that figure out stuff that hasn't been figured out before, which means you have to know how to do stuff that isn't known how to do. That's the exciting thing of science. So I'm trying to show you that in this course, but the only way to show you is to show you hopefully through some things that at first do feel like you know how to do them. Otherwise, okay, so anyway, blah, blah, blah. so don't worry if you didn't get a good grade on the homework just go back and listen in today's class and next class and then go back and revise whenever you want. Uh, like I can tell you right now, you can tell already, we're not going to get up to homework three today. We're not. So uh, like, even if I sign more homework or something, which I haven't yet, but even if I sign homework four or something like that, don't worry about it. You know, it's going to be a while before we get to it. Even if Google classroom says it's late or something, I'm not concerned about lateness only on exams. Am I concerned about lateness? So wherever you are in the course, just keep revising the score you want. And just as long as you're a little bit ahead of me, a little bit, 
then you're doing the right thing. Oh, and before I, I almost meant to say a second ago, a couple of you did hand in homework one kind of earlyish, like last week or whatever, or, or just happened to get a couple of you people did hand in homework one and got it back, like like last week, and got like twelves or fourteens or something. And those couple of people then had time for whatever reason. It might have just been dumb luck of my grading, but then they had time. They saw my comments. They totally revised. They handed in new copies. And they've gotten 20s. I'm just saying, like, the system does work. I promise you. Like, some people have already turned back the homework and gotten 20s. And all of you can totally do that. I will not pull out, like, you're not going to run out of time. I mean, you might run out, but I'm not going to stop the clock on you. I just want you all to get 20s if you want, when you want. So I'm here today to talk about how to do that on both the physics and the general instructions. If I put a bunch of acronyms on your homework, if I put a bunch of things like GDP, PCA, F, W, I, Q, I'm gonna explain those again today. Hopefully I, I might even make, maybe I should make out a sheet or something. Many of them I've already explained in past videos. I'm gonna to try to explain them one more time so you should make a note or at least know today's the day I'm explaining. If you have to walk out of the room, just remember to watch the video later. But okay, and, and we'll all get used to this. Everybody's doing fine. but. Last thing to say, if you've already gotten two scores, if you've gotten a score on homework one and a score on homework two, then you're doing fine in the class no matter what those scores are. It means you're on top of things. It means you're with me. Don't, if you got less than the score that you want, it just means there's still more to do. But you are not behind, nor failing, nor messing up or something if you don't, if the two scores you got were not perfect. As long as you got two scores, you're totally with me. Um, and I haven't graded number three yet for anybody. So nobody got a third score yet on that. Um, okay, wait, hold on, let me, sorry. I'm just babbling back when I just check the chat. Yeah, oh, so I think I, hopefully I answered this. Hopefully, so I'm just seeing Lakshmi's question. How long, you have infinite, as far, like until further notice you have to redo the homeworks, really, really, really. And if Lakshmi did hear my answer or then she can say like, got it, thanks. And then she gets points for closing a conversation. You know, that's one of those game things. I hope that, oh, there she goes. Right, so she just got like eight points for saying thank you, like seriously. And, and not just because it's polite, but also because it means I can go on. Okay, I hope you all get, okay, cool. So she just got another eight points, yes. All right, um, I appreciate that. Oh, now last thing also, so I'm gonna get back. And again, we'll all, we're, you know, you always wanna be a little bit ahead of me, so to speak. You wanna be working on things before, at least you wanna be working in your first draft before I talk about something in class. That may feel sketchy to some of you, but that is the way it goes. Then I talk more, then you revise, then you hand in again, and it goes like that. As long as you're a little bit ahead of me, then you are not behind, um, regardless of what Google Classroom says. But on that note, and I'm not, and because I'm a little bit behind you guys now, like I haven't graded homework three yet, right? I don't even really, I don't think I'm even posting another real homework for at least not tonight. It might be in a few days. So on that note, let me just check up one thing. I kept forgetting last week when we last met. I mean, I know it's all a spotty schedule right now, but we, correct me if I'm wrong, we do not have John Jay this Wednesday. Is that, can someone confirm or deny? Like this class yeah. does not. Wednesday or Thursday. Say it again, Kayla. I'm sorry, say it. Wednesday and Thursday, it's closed. Okay, thank you. And, oh, and that's Charlie too. Oh, thank you. So by the way, again, anybody who just answered that, like I saw Daniela answer, I saw Charlie answer, I saw Jayla, all of you, like literally that's points for each. I mean, not to be cheesy again, but I also want you all to know, it doesn't matter. It's not a race of who answered first. Like they all just helped me. They're all showing their benefit. So they can all submit that for points. So thank you. All right, so we don't have school. So I don't even know if one of the assignments says that it's due this Wednesday. If it does, I'll adjust it. But so I, just to warn you, because it's like, this is all like kind of spazzy beginning of the year. Um, and you have a spazzy professor. Uh, don't be shocked if I post homework for somewhere in this intervening time because we're going so long without seeing each other. I may post homework for. I don't know what I'll make the deadline, but I can tell you right now. Again, it's just so that you all have the next thing to work on. If you don't have anything else, you know. But your first priority would be if you want to revise whatever you've gotten back. I would make that your first priority. Um, and if I do post homework for, don't take it as extra stress or something, just take it as the next thing that we're up to. And there's no way I'm getting to homework four in the next class. Like I can tell you that right now, like we have a little ways to go. So so I, I probably will post homework four somewhere in this intervening week, just to stay in touch with you. But, and so if you're up to it and you can do it, do it. But, and I'll see that, but if not, no crisis. Uh, okay. 
Let me, um, sorry, in theory, right. So in theory, my plan for today was to continue finishing or continue going over the number line sheet, the homework one, and then I was gonna to move to homework two. Um, we started to develop some equations. We have one equation so far in this class. I wanna start using it more and start developing other equations. Like obviously class is gonna look more and more mathematical as we progress. But I think one thing I just wanna do because now I've seen so many homeworks and so many of you gotten back, I wanna quickly, I think, is this efficient? I'm gonna sort of quick, I may make a typewritten sheet and put it in Google Classroom to make this as clear as I can and make it as permanent as I can. But let me right now, before we even get back to the physics, let me give you right like, like these acronyms that I'm writing all over your homework. Let me quickly summarize them right here on a sheet so that it's easier to read my handwriting and see what I'm looking for on the homework. And, and what this comes down to is it really is like a basic scientific method of at least how to do physics homework. It's the method to follow whenever you get a, a question. Um, it's the procedure to follow. If you do think you can do the answer in your head, then break down what you did in your head into this procedure. If you don't think you know what to do, then you follow this procedure, okay? I mean, it's just, just like scientific method. Um, and remember the assumption is, one thing I wanna compliment and thank you all, all of you clearly have gotten the point that you do homework on separate sheets of paper. That's great. I pre I've noticed that, I appreciate that. And you're not turning in my questions, you're turning in your own work, I appreciate that. Just, but please do remember, and this is one of the acronyms, even though yes, every single time I wanna know what the question is that you're working on, I don't want you to copy paste my questions. There's a lot of reasons for that. Like, I, and we're just getting used to each other, but. I want you to present what the question is in your words, not a copy pasted version of it, because I need you to show me that you actually get the question. Um, but okay, that said. Oh, sorry, sorry. Well, that's not what I meant to do. My bad. Okay, for, so first, First, give me, always, I mean, whether I gave it to you or not, I mean, give me your version first of the diagram and fact pattern. In other words, the givens, like present the givens. You really should always have a diagram first. Sometimes I give you one and that makes it more easy to remember that you should give me one, but sometimes I don't. And that's, I guess that's on me, but I mean, that's bad on me, but either way, you want to always present the givens first. Like what are the facts of this situation, the fact pattern and the best way, or one of the most important ways to present the givens is through a diagram. The labels in the diagram become the definitions of the variables and constants in the problem. Like, like ideally for every problem, you should have a diagram first, your version of that, like a, like a rough. I, diagram could mean sketch, could mean picture. It, it doesn't have to be a, per, particular type of diagram, but some kind of picture of the situation. And then you're, as we get more and more mathematical, you'll see that your labels in the picture tell us, uh, like you'll label something like X or, or, uh, um, or F, for, like X for displacement or F for force or something like that. And then your labels in the picture will then make it clear to us how, what the variables X and F mean in the work that you're doing. Okay, and there should be some facts too next to the diagram, like, you know, either a legend or a key or like how to read the diagram, um, how to read the labels, but 
First, you're giving us givens and you're giving it givens through a visualization. Let me also, I'll go on in a second, but the other reason the diagram is really important, a some kind of picture um, is because we're gonna look more and more mathematical as we go. All of this is gonna look more and more like math and math is the language of physics, but math and physics are not the same thing. Physics is about the physical world, just like history and English are not the same thing. English is just the language that you use to take a history class. This is a physics class. It's about the physical world of space, time, matter, and energy. So in order to do like really focus our attention on the physical qualities of any problem, that's one of the reasons we always need a picture. To, like we don't always need that in math because math isn't necessarily about picturing things, but physics is. So anyway, start with a dot. So if I write DFB anywhere on your homework, I'm saying diagram and fact pattern, please start with, okay? That's the first thing you do. Also notice, if you if a problem is really hard and you don't really know what to do, I'm, like you look at the question you're like I don't know how to solve this, but if you start with a diagram and fact pattern, like that that just involves reading the problem and then putting it in your own words, your own picture. Like it's a step that can be done even if you don't know how to get an answer. It's just a re presentation of the question back to me. It's almost like you're stalling your brain, you're giving your brain something to do instead of panic while it sits there and warms up and starts to ease its way toward trying to answer the question. So it's like a good neural habit to do. Anyway, you know this from the, the, the way to do the hardest stuff in life, like physics, is to treat yourself like a kindergartner. If you ever feel like I'm sounding like a kindergarten teacher, I don't mean to, do, like, I don't mean to condescend to anybody. It's not because I think anybody's being dumb or infantile at all. It's how I treat myself. The harder a situation is that I have to face intellectually, the more I dumb my, I dumb it down. Like for me, like, right, I resort back to the fundamentals of how to solve a problem that I learned when I was really little, because that's how I feel in the face of a really big problem. And, and they're correct for a reason. But anyway, so, okay. So first diagram, fact pattern. Then, and I can switch back the page at any time if I'm going to, if my hand, please let me know. So then the next thing you do, the next thing I keep writing on people's homework, this stands for, now this is super important. I take off point. This is where people are gonna lose the most points on their exam. I can tell you right now. Like you got, before you start answering a question, make it clear what the question is, like every single time. It may feel like a waste of time sometimes. It may feel like annoying sometimes, but at worst, that's what it should feel like. At worst, it should be a waste of time or feel annoying because at worst, it should feel so obvious and simple that you don't even know why you're like being asked to do it. But in other words, it shouldn't feel confusing or hard. If it is confusing or hard to write down the question, then you know that signals you why you're having problems answering the question is you're, you're actually not even understanding what the question is. And if you can realize that you don't understand what the question is this early on in the game, you have a shot of untangling it and going somewhere. But a lot of people, a lot of time have problems with answering questions in physics or other sciences. They'll get themselves all in a jam or in a stalled panic, not being able to answer a question because they never even stop and realize that the reason they can't answer the question is they don't even know what the question is. Like you got to stop and know what the question is before you move on and make sure you understand every word in it or whatever. So what is the question means literally? And this I wrote on some of your papers, like So I'm saying you look at my question and then present it in your way. It can definitely be abbreviated for sure. And the more you can abbreviate it and yet still include all the information, the more you show you really get it. Like it really might be, I might have all this stuff and say like, what is the acceleration at the very first instant of the experiment? And you could literally, if as long as you understand that, you could literally write down as the question, A equals question mark at T equals zero. Like, that could be the whole question. Like, what is A when T equals zero? Like, I'm not saying you have to get more fancy. You want to get less fancy. You want to show that you know exactly what the question is. You can totally abbreviate, but just make it cl clear what it is. But it has to be your own words. Now, I'm also going to say this to many of you, and i.e. don't copy and paste. 
because I know what the question is already. That showing me that I've already typed the question doesn't help either one of us. I need to know that you know what the question is. And also I need you to know that you know what the question is because that's what's gonna help if the question's hard. Anyway, I keep saying that. But the other thing about the your own words, okay, a lot of people will say at this point, well, like, I mean, I mean, didn't you choose the right, like you're the physics guy, dude. Like, like you wrote the question, like, didn't you? I mean, I hope you didn't put extra words in there just to like mess with me. So presumably you wrote the question in a good way. So like, do I literally have to change every freaking word you put, Yabberbound? I mean, like, aren't some of your words like the right words? Like, could some of my words be the same as yours? Of course, absolutely. Like your version of the question might bear a lot of similarities to mine, but if you, wa you wanna know where the hard line is between your words and my words, I mean, there is no hard line, but if you wanna know the test of whether you're honestly doing what I'm saying or not, it's this simple. Look at my question, look at the question you're about to answer, and then, don't look at it while you write down the question on the piece of paper for me. Like, as long as you're putting down the question without looking at mine, right? In other words, without copying and pasting it even mentally, if you looked at the question and you get it enough, you're like, okay, he's asking what the acceleration is. All right, so, okay, I'm gonna write down, what is the acceleration? As long as you wrote it without looking, I guarantee enough of your words will be different from mine that, and, and enough will be similar that, if you can do it without looking, you clearly know what the question means and now you're good to go. So, and that, so it might only differ from one word, but just we both, but if you copy paste, you haven't even given yourself the opportunity. And I don't mean to keep criticizing that. I mean, it's okay that people did that at this stage, but I'm saying don't even manually copy paste. Just look away for a second and see like, okay, he's asking what the acceleration is. What is the acceleration? Just do that. Okay. So you write down, what is the question? That's your um, that's stage two, stage B. And by the way, there's five things that you have to do. You can like memorize this whole method if you want, but like first you write down a diagram and the general fact patterns, the givens. Then you write down what the question is, okay? And this is no matter how easy the question is, the easier the question, the better an opportunity to practice this. So then you write down what the question is. Then, okay, now that you've written down the question and presumably you know what it means, like maybe the question is like, what is the average velocity as the instructor goes from like the first second to the third second, right? Like, and maybe you can do that in your head. Again, I'm not, and I'm psyched if you can. I trust me, I could see the, I could see in your homeworks, those of you who are just like whipping through and getting the right answers. It does not escape me that many of you get what's going on. And that will only help you in the long run. I'm for real. But let's say the question now is what is the average velocity? And you've written that down. Like, what is the average velocity? The next thing you do before you even plug in numbers, the thing to do now is to write a general definition or principle, which means like law. You're going to write down something general now. It will often be nine times out of 10 as we progress more. It's going to be an equation, but I'm saying it won't have numbers in it. It won't be the particular situation yet. It will be the key term of the question defined or expanded somehow, right? So like if I, oh, so sorry. So what I'm saying is this is what I mean by general definition or principle. So, and this is a really important step. You're gonna see, many of you may already see, this is a super important step. This is a step that a lot of people skip because they think their brain did it so fast. They think their brain didn't do it. Like, in other words, well, people skip this step a lot. Like I'll say, what's the average velocity? And they'll write down like, oh, well, it's nine over eight. And that's like 1.1.25. Well, no, yes. The average velocity in this case might be nine over eight. In this case, it might, in other words, sorry. In this case, the average velocity might be like nine over eight because in this case, the displacement was nine and the time was eight. But what average velocity always is, first and foremost, is displacement over time. And there's no way your brain knew to put in nine over eight unless your brain knew first to go, well, average velocity is displacement over time. Oh, in this case, the displacement is nine. In this case, the, the, the time is eight. So I'm putting in nine over eight. Like, again, I know many of you do that in lightning rates in your brain. And I'm not, and thank God. And that's how you've gotten this far in science, in hard science. You do that super fast, but don't kid yourself. Don't insult yourself. If you super fast went through those two steps, if you were like average velocity is displacement over time. In this case, the displacement is nine. And, and I'm just making up or you know, negative nine happens. 
And in this case, the displacement is negative nine. And in this case, the, dis the time is eight. So it's negative nine over eight. If your brain did that super fast, yay. But don't say to yourself, my brain didn't do that. Your brain couldn't have not done that. Your brain couldn't have skipped to nine over eight unless it knew that average velocity in general is displacement over time. That's a key step. And that's the step that we, we always like ignore when we know it. But if we don't know the answer to the question or what to do, that's the key step to do to get there. In other words, what I'm saying is start always with triple equal sign. Whoop, that's not English. Yep. Sorry. Okay, um, so just as a sign that like in homework two, a lot of you are gonna see, a lot of you lost a lot of points in homework two. A lot of you actually got the answers to the last two problems incorrect. Not a big deal. I'm not saying you lost points because your answers are incorrect, but a lot of you might be surprised to know that your answers are incorrect because question two and three of homework two, I'm skipping around here, but just to make an example, like the up downhill thing, the hill figure thing, and then the grandma Grimm thing, they both seem like really easy questions, but they're not as easy as they seem. It seems, and I don't wanna to get too bogged down in this, but it seems like the answer to the up downhill thing should be 50, but it's not 50. And if you actually stop and put down a general definition before you start plugging in numbers, if you put down the definition, you'll see that the numbers that a lot of you are plugging in are not the right numbers. Um, they, so, like this is a very, so in a lot of cases on homework two, on the last two problems, I just wrote in big letters like GDP and then like, and then wrote out, crossed out the answers and wrote, no, I was not trying to be harsh. Again, you can totally redo it. You will redo it once I talk about it in class, but it is like a warning. This is why this method actually is necessary because sometimes questions seem really easy, but they're not. Uh, and you see that if you do the whole method anyway. So you write down a general definition and or principle. In other words, we're not putting numbers, we're postponing numbers. The more physics looks like math, the less numbers there are, in it, if that makes sense. Like the more physics starts looking like math, the more it looks like equations with letters in the general statements of truth. And then they, we apply those equations to particular problems and get numbers out of them. And we want to go in this order. Last way I'll put it. Maybe please write this down if you can. I'm not going to, uh, I want to keep moving, but the idea is to go start always with what is true and make it relevant. Sounds totally obvious, right? Of course, like, duh, what else would I do? But what people always do when they panic, when they don't know how to do a question in science, what people tend to do without realizing it is they try to start by making things, they start with things they think are relevant. They like try to like look what the teacher's looking for or look what this question, oh, this must have to do with that homework assignment that I didn't do last Tuesday or blah, 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 blah. So people, or I know he's like, this teacher's really into Planck's constant. So like, okay, I'm gonna use Planck's constant. And then they like try to like contort and contort until they can get an answer that seems true. Well, and I do, I'm, I'm just telling you what I do all the time. When I panic, I, tr I start by being relevant and then I try to make it true. No, no, no. The, the, the right thing to do is step back when you don't, either when you know what's going on or you don't know what's going on, especially when you acknowledge that you might think you know what's going on and you might be wrong. You might not actually know what's going on. Step back and be true first and then make it relevant. If you always start with something that's always true, like a triple equal sign, even if you still can't get the answer, you get points for writing that down. And I'm dead serious about this on an exam. If I ask what's the average velocity and your first line is average velocity, triple equal sign displacement over time. If that's the first thing you write, that's points right there. Cause that's correct. There's no way that's wrong. That is right. That is always true. You might not know what to do with it or you might plug in the wrong numbers but you just got points for writing down something that's true. And then hopefully it's gonna help you get the next step. But if you start by plugging in numbers you might be starting way like in the wrong arena. So start with what's true 
and make it relevant. Don't start with what's relevant and try to make it true. And please write that down if you can. And I pro I'm going to put a portal for this, but I promise I'm going to make a portal for writing down things that I didn't write down. And if it's anybody's screenshots, if you send me a screenshot later, it's like start with what's true and make it relevant rather than start with what's relevant, make it true. If you send me that, you will, I have to open up a portal, but I will give you points for showing that you're writing things down that I'm asking you to write down that I didn't even bother to write down myself. Anyway, I'm going to move on now. So that's C, GDP, general definitions and our principles. Then after that step, then you do the thing that most people do do and they consider the bulk of the work. Then you go into what I would call paw. Now that you have a thing written down, I, I probably should have been streaming an example through this sheet as I was doing, but sorry. Like if our example is what is the average velocity, you know, as the instructor goes from here to here. Now that you in part C wrote average velocity, triple equal sign displacement over time. Now the next step is, okay, particular application and do the work. That really means this is the plug-in part that everybody loves. This is what everybody considers. This is the kind of work that everybody's comfortable with that they tend to hand in if they hand in any work. Plug in numbers. So now you would write, okay, you know, displacement is not negative nine, time is eight. So here, average velocity equals negative nine over eight. Um, so And this is where you would be careful about units. You would also be careful about scientific notation if that's relevant. Like this is what the part that like looks like chemistry class or whatever, you know, all the skills of scientific solving problem that we learn, we tend to learn in chemistry, um, like happens here now, okay? I'm just saying there's a lot that generally happens before here. And, and again, well, I, okay, I've made that point. But um, so here's where you start plugging in the numbers, you track your units, you do stoichiometry, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and you start getting, you know, and you do the work. Now, again, this is the part that a lot of people, when they look at a physics question, as things get harder, when they look and they go, I have no idea what to do. What they're really saying is they don't have any picture in their mind of how to do this piece, which is what they think or what they're used to scientific work looking like. When people say, I have no idea what to do, they're saying, I have no idea what numbers to plug in or what formula to use, they'll say. I'm saying that's because you're skipping steps in your brain. Don't go straight to this. Don't think what formulas do should I use. Don't even think formulas. I don't. The word formula is like a weird. It makes it seem like it's just like black magic that we just pull out of recipe books for. No, just like if you if your habit is to write down the question and then define the terms of the question, they those definitions of the terms of the question present themselves as equations to you. Those equations are the formulas you're looking for, if that makes any sense. Like if you do steps A, B, and C, it'll be clear what to do in D. It'll be the easy part by the time you get to it. It's just knowing how to set it up is what everybody says is the problem. I'm saying it comes from A, B, and C. I'm gonna show, I know I'm going in circles here, but so that's D is Paul, the particular application in the work. Also, this is the part, I suppose, if I ever write on your, If I ever write www on your homework, I kind of mean that you're missing all of this. I mean, if I write www, I mean, why, what, where from? Like, I mean, where are you getting these things from? Like it, it generally, I write it when people are just putting down random formulas that might be correct, but they just seem to just, but they probably came from the internet. And even though they might be correct, I don't know how they landed on the page. I don't know what motivated them. I don't have any reason to believe that you know wh why to use them or how to use them. And I, and I don't know how you're using them, right? So WWW is kind of an obnoxious shorthand for the, like, I think you're missing a huge process here, but you know, um, uh, that, that's what WWW means. It probably means that you're missing ABCC through D, but um, 
Okay, so that's D, then E. And again, all of this, I promise, I'm not trying to criticize anybody. I didn't learn this until I learned it. Like I went through a lot of science before I realized how much I was faking it till I make it. And that's what you do. You fake it until you make it. But there are ways of doing that. And, and homework is one of them. Um, uh, okay, so then E, so that's pause. So then now we have found, we've gone from like a general principle. Now we've plugged in numbers and we've manipulated units and stuff like that. So now we kind of are verging on an answer. So this is where the last step is you get a final answer and, uh, excuse me, a final conclusion, a final answer, and you please circle it or really emphasize it in some way, highlight. Boldface is nice and many of you are boldfacing your answers. I totally note that, I appreciate it. But it's not, it's still a little bit like fuzzy does I Even better would be like circling or putting a highlight through or something. But anyway, what I'm saying here is, And that's the last stage. If I write, sometimes I do this, I mean, because I have old fashioned ways. All right, so I'm, oh, why? Oh, weird that it's like, that's so ghostly that that is appearing while I'm, okay, anyway, those are the five stages. I mean, honestly, for, and I think that's also all pretty much the acronyms that you'll see on your page, like those five steps plus WWW plus PCA. Like if you see any of those, that's what they mean. But those five steps is what I'm, you know, and sometimes I grade faster and sometimes slower. And you'll notice also, sometimes I literally show the points that I'm taking off while I'm grading your homework. And sometimes I just rush these comments down and then take off a chunk of points at the end. I, in exams, I literally show you every single place that you lost points. Sometimes in homework I do, sometimes I don't. But that's again, because like, I don't think we're gonna get into, I don't think any of you is gonna get into a big heated, like concern with me over this one point or that because you could just get them back. Um, um, but what I am trying to instruct or advise all of you is when in doubt, this is the basic five steps that I'm looking for to solve problems whether we think we know the answer or we don't. I honestly believe that this is, I think we all, if we always knew the answer and how to get it, we wouldn't need these methods. I, I understand that. If we always knew the answer, we wouldn't need these methods, but we need these methods for when we don't know how to get the answer. And please note, as you see in homework two, the, the real tricky thing is that sometimes we think we know how to get the answer, but we're wrong. So this is like to keep you safe, to keep us safe in solving problems. These five steps, you can memorize them or not or whatever, but this is what I'm looking for. This is how I grade in homework. You can get all the right answers and still lose a lot of points if you don't do these. But conversely, if you do these five steps, I can tell you this right now, and at least two people in the class have already proven this. You can still get some, if you do all these five steps throughout a homework assignment, then even if your final answers are all wrong, you could still get all the points for the homework. Um, okay. Um, so, all right, that's that. Let me just, I'm gonna pause for, let me just. All right. So I wanna now turn back to num, and please, please, please too, even if I went too fast or hope, you know, I post these notes at the end of class, please just make a note that today was the day that I gave these acronyms and stuff. So. I understand I'm going faster. It might be more clear as you get more homework back, but just if you ever are confused again, you know, you can just watch this video again or just look at these notes, but hopefully we're on the same page now going forward. Also, please note, I hope to see you all in Physics 204 after this course. I, I mean that, like it's most of you, if this course is required for you, then probably Physics 204 is required for you as well. Um, I almost always teach all the lecture sections of that as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing you. I'm not disappointed with anybody's performance thus far, really, or worried or anything. So anything I'm saying here applies to Physics 204 as well. Like if you feel like I'm wasting your time right now, it all applies for two semesters. And Physics 204 is where things get very mathy and very abstract for a lot of people, like a lot of integrals, integral calculus, differential equations, like it gets heavy. But as long as you just stick to this method, you can, you can wade your way through anything. I think, but okay, I'm gonna take a, so if there's, I'm gonna pause for a second, just in case there's any questions or concerns and, and what, I'll pause for a second, but then I'm gonna turn back to finishing homework one number line. Um,
we don't. So I saw Charlie saying in the chat, I hope, please let me know a little bit late. If Charlie, if I left you hanging, I might've left something, You, it might've already been resolved, but what you wrote in the chat, I forget why you wrote, we don't in the chat. It might've been to something someone else said and it might be fine. But if I, let me know if I left something unresolved. But okay. Oh, oh, you're right. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And that, 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 right. Thank you. And that totally counts again as closing a conversation. I have to open up more portals for more of these points stuff, but thank you. It makes me, I was like losing my mind there. Right. Okay. So we don't have class on this area. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. And it's so crazy. You know, I mean, I don't know if it's the type of holiday we're, you know, we're, we don't have school because of holidays that are observed in a particular religion that happens to be the religion that I totally was brought up in. Like, you, I should be the one that, like, it's my fault that you guys don't have school or it's my people's fault. So it's kind of outrageous that I keep asking you. But um, anywho, uh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn back to homework to number one. All right, um, and maybe, I'm gonna look up myself, but maybe one of you might wanna remind me in the chat or with your voice, what question we were up to. I mean, I'm about to, I'm about to try to find out, but if you, one of you has it right in front of you, the notes from last time, what we were up to in, in homework one. Oh, and in fact, let me even see, when is homework? Oh, it's a train of thought was already really open. Okay. Okay. We oh there is gibberish in there. We were up to are we up to question three? of part one, does anybody want to confirm or deny? Well, I'm gonna stop for a minute by redrawing drawing the diagram for us, but if someone could tell me where they think we're up to, that would help. We were gonna start question five. Oh, thank you very much, awesome, and who, okay, great, we were up to, and that was, that was almost, uh, no, that was, was that, sorry, Oh, 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 many of you answered. Oh, sorry, I was like sitting there drawing that when you all, okay, great, great, great. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you, Jayla. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you, Jayla. Thank you, Alyssa. I, and I'm not being sarcastic. I appreciate it. My bad. Thank you. Okay, question five. Okay, just redrawing two. I'm just reminding myself that it's going to be. Okay, so that's my notice. So this is, I've never quite drawn the diagram this way before. This is my new way of drawing the diagram. Just notice. It's all the same information. It's very similar to the diagram on the page, but it's not quite the same. Just, you know, that's just an example of what you would do in your homework, but okay. Um, but I think it shows that I know what the question is, which I didn't until I just drew it. 
All right. So question five. Question five. Oh, so we did. Oh, good. All right. So what's the instructors? Okay, and again here, and I will go faster and faster again. And again, I do understand that to some of you, this is boring and I, you know, I hate that. I don't wanna bore anybody. There is a funny cliche in physics, how at any given moment in a physics class, it tends to be the case that, pe that things are either clear, in which case they're boring, or they're exciting, in which case they're confusing. Like that, I mean, I don't want that. I'm trying to find a balance in between, but you know, when in doubt, if you're ever bored, at least just tell yourself, well, at least I guess that means it's clear. Um, uh, but just notice that here again, I'm trying to just, I'm just trying to be a little bit very, very like here's question five. And I wrote average speed uh, from t equals zero to t equals five. Not exactly the way I wrote it in the homework and not exactly the way I wrote it in the notes last time, but that does cover all the information of the question. And now I'm going to solve it. Just notice one thing also, I, I keep saying, as we progress more and more, things will be more equation driven. They will look more and more like equations. But just to note, like the things that we have equations for, the things we have symbols and equations for are all the vector quantities. I think this is actually where we ended last time. Like, I think I made that little two by two box for you. Like, please like, look back in your notes. Remember like distance and average speed are scalar quantities, meaning that they don't care about direction. Whereas displacement and average velocity are vector quantities. They do incorporate direction. And I'm only bringing that up to remind you or to say like anytime it's, it's, it's displacement and average velocity that we kind of have symbols and equations for because they become more and more like the meat of physics. We don't really, I mean, sometimes it's hard, hard to symbolize the softer concepts of like distance and speed. So even for right now, when I'm gonna follow my method, right? Like I have my diagram up there. I wrote the question. So I did A, I did B. Now I'm gonna write my general principle or definition. This will ultimately often be an equation, but here I don't like really exactly have an equation for average speed, but I do certainly have a definition. Like my definition is, and I'm gonna write it here. Like, like I'm looking for average speed, right? So I literally write down, and many of you did this and many of you didn't. I literally write down, okay, average speed is defined to be distance over time. I know I'm dragging this out. I know it's already clear to most of you, but, uh, but just notice I'm starting with a triple equal sign. I'm not starting with numbers. I'm starting with a larger concept. Um, so then, so that's like, that's what I mean by GDP, general definition or principle. Now I go to D, Paul, like particular application and work. So now I shift to a double equal sign and I say, fine, in this case, and again, this would look more and more like equations as we go. In this case, the distance, okay, from t equals zero to t equals five, that means the first five seconds from, um, so that the, 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 the distance um, uh, uh, is first, well, the, 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 sorry, actually, the distance is is the total amount of ground cover, right? So the distance equals, if you like, the absolute value of negative six plus the absolute value of six, right? In other words, 12. Like the distance, the total distance for that first five seconds is however far he went in the first three seconds plus however far he went in the next two seconds, not taking into account direction, hence absolute value, right? So the distance, is, is 12 feet. And, and the time, of course, if by definition, the time in the first five seconds is five seconds. So the average speed equals 12 feet per five seconds. And you actually could technically leave it like that and that'd be a fine answer. Or you could do what a lot of us would do and say something like 2.4 feet Per second, this would be the average speed. And that's, that's my final answer. Right, right. 
right? Okay, so that's the answer, 2.4 feet per second, or you could leave it as 12.5, but that's the answer to number five. I'll keep going, go a little bit back. Let me just check one thing, so the time for this goes to 12.05. Um, so that's that. All right. So then question six, but please stop me if I'm, you can also privately chat me and say, can you please go faster or something? I wouldn't be insulted. I might not be able to do it, but I wouldn't be insulted. Um, so six, the next question six was, uh, oh wait, did I just do the, oh no, I did. Okay. So six is now what's the average? Yeah. Okay. So six is what's the average velocity? for t equals zero to t equals five, right? Okay, now, again, notice I have my diagram still from above. Um, I'm writing the question, so I did step A, step B. Now I write my general definition or, or, or a principle. Um, in this case, with average velocity, I can write this one in equation form because we have an equation for this. Um, So I'm going to write, I'm going to go like this, average velocity triple equal sign. Average velocity, this is our one and only equation right now, but we have it, is displacement over time, right? It's just like average speed equals distance over time, average displacement equals displacement over time, but we have symbols for that. Displacement is final position minus initial position, and we have x designating position and x naught designating initial position. And we had, and again, don't forget, we, I, if we're getting used to this still, like technically, this is what's happening here, right? Technically it's displacement interval over time interval. Like it's totally a parallel thing. That's why it's triple equal sign. Like we didn't discover this in the lab. We're just saying average velocity is the simplest possible ratio of space interval to time interval only T naught always equals zero by definition. So we never have to put it. So that's why the equation ends up looking unbalanced, if that makes any sense. But there is our general definition or principle, our triple equal sign. So now I convert it to a double equal sign. Oops, sorry. And I might say something like, okay, here. So it's final position minus initial position. The final position at the end of that five seconds is position four, I believe, right? Minus the initial position, which is four, I believe, if we're looking at the same thing. Um, Right now, again, a lot of you got this right. Um, um, 
the answer to the average velocity question is zero feet per second. Now here we're sort of trying to make a point to one another. Like hopefully the homework, you know, isn't too stressful. And as I say, I know a lot of you got this right answer even without all my little steps and stuff like that. And I think a lot of you understand that this is the right answer or hopefully maybe even all of you at this point. But notice we're also showing our, it's, we're not trying to make our life difficult, but we are sort of illustrating the difference, the distinction between average speed and average velocity. Like, like it's possible to do a lot of motion and have an average velocity of nothing, of zero. In fact, as many of you did point out in the homework, it's not only possible, it's definitely the case for any round trip that we ever do. No matter how fast we're going, no matter how much motion we do, if we end up where we start, our, then our average velocity for the whole journey is zero. Because average velocity means how far were you displaced per a certain amount of time. And if you ultimately were not displaced at all, no matter how much you sweat or how much you ground you covered, you averaged zero velocity. So this is true. Any round trip, necessarily, the average velocity is zero. And notice also, by round trip in physics, we don't necessarily mean round. There is no round yet. We're all in a line here. We're all going back and forth in one dimension of space. By round trip, we mean a trip that, for which you end up where you started. OK, so all right, so this was zero here. Um, OK, I'm just going to keep going if there's no. But OK, so that was the correct answer. Uh, Okay. Question. So question six or question seven now, or I think. Let me look there. Or does this go to part now? Maybe we go to part two. I can't remember. Oh, yeah, part two. Sorry. Okay, I believe this is question D. Right. Oh no. Oh wait. The, oh no. Middle two. Uh. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, Okay. Um, this, I was debating whether I should say this or not. Well, all right. Again, we want a distance here, right? We're just asking distance. So um, um, uh, distance equals the sum of, well, so I'm going to write a general definition.
Now notice, okay, I just want to be clear. Like I'm suddenly using some new words that I haven't used before, but I think they correspond with words that I've used before. Like I'm saying now, and again, this is a little tricky because this part is English and we don't like have equations as such, but what's distance, right? It's the total amount of ground covered. It's the sum of everything you did. But like, like what I'm just trying to do is formalize here. I'm trying to remind myself before I go any further, what I, what I did to calculate distance in sort of easier cases or more straightforward cases like um, in, yeah, on this page here, boom. Um, when I had to get average speed distance over time, how did I get the distance? I took the absolute value of negative six and added it to the absolute value of six. Like there's not a formula for that. There's not an equation. It just, it's, but, and you may not have written it that way, but I'm sure that's what you did in your head, right? Like when you wanted to get the distance for the first five feet, uh, five uh, seconds, as long as you understood what I was talking about, and as long as you got the right answer, I, I, I hope you'll agree, no matter what you wrote on the paper, or no matter how you thought about it, what you were doing in your mind was you were like, okay, from four to negative two, that's six, plus negative two to four, that's six again. And what you did was you realized that each chunk was six without getting worried about the fact that one chunk was to the left and the other was to the right. In other words, you took the absolute value of each chunk and you added the absolute values together. Like whether you explicitly put it in those terms or not, it's like what you had to do to get the 12. So I'm, and one of the reasons it was worth me writing it out there when we knew what we were doing is, I feel like it's a good thing to come back to now when I might not exactly know what I'm doing. Like, I wanna do that again. I'm going to add the absolute values of the chunks together. Whoop. Right. And now I'm going a step further. I'm saying like, you know how before we were saying X means wherever you are, whatever position and X naught is the very first position The X naught X sub zero means X when T equals zero. Right. So up until now we've had like X minus X naught or something equals displacement. I'm just extrapolating that concept now and saying, well, if you have a bunch of different positions, let's just keep numbering them if we want. I'm not always going to do that. But when it's relevant, I could be like my very first position was X naught, then my next position was X one, then my next position after that was X two, and I could keep going, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to get in the habit of taking whatever thoughts are fast going through my brain and breaking them down into some sort of mathematical symbols, because that's all physics does, right? We, in other words, formulas don't just come out of black magic bags and we, and then we just like uh, uh, accept them and memorize them. No, what, there's no such thing as a formula, really. What there are is equations. They're saying that this always is the same thing as that. And what those equations come from is definitions. They're just putting symbols to logic that we already have in our brains. Like, so they, they should always make sense, in other words. I guess another way to put what I'm saying is physics, people think physics is about plugging into equations. Physics is just as much about developing equations as it is about plugging into equations. We're trying to convert our English soft thoughts into mathematically precise thoughts. So we're as frequently as, as, frequently as we plug into equations that we already have, we're developing new equations from what we're thinking. All right, anyway, so I'm gonna say distance is We've got to add up the absolute values of the intervals between positions. So really what this comes down to, and of course you knew this, of course I'm like dragging this off, but it really goes to say, in order for me to get the distance from T equals three to T equals five, I really need to know where is the guy at T equals three? Where is the guy at T equals five? Where is the guy anywhere in between, right? That's what it, I'm really getting at here. So. Okay, now I'm not, this may or may not be hard, but I'm just breaking down what I need to know. Um, now, it seems to me, according to the problem, the problem told us that at the end of the third second, like the thing, the guy is at a position uh, negative two, right? Like. And at T, I, I think that was given in the problem. Stop me if I'm wrong about that. And by the way, I, I know we have four minutes, so we're just going to get, we're going to end in four minutes. 
And as usual, like, I'll just stop in four minutes. I'll hang out for a little bit to make sure there's no questions or whatever. Like, but once I say go, then you can all go and don't wait for me to leave for you. To, you get it, you get it. All right, so then at t equals four, um, at t equals four, I don't know if we know. I'll put that, we, we weren't actually even, we'll have to figure that out in a second. At t equals five, um, at t equals five, um, x equals four, right? So maybe I'm making all this much more complicated than I need to, I probably am. Um, but right, okay. So I am sort of making this more complicated than I need to. I mean, I think the answer to this is six, right? But if I'm understanding the question correctly or remembering the question correctly, we're just asking how far does the instructor go in total from, from the interval from three to five? And I believe during that interval, it's sort of, it is given in the problem that he's just cruising from negative four all the way to six, right? Like I was doing all this just in case something funky happened in the middle there, but nothing funky did happen. Um, it seems that, in other words, uh, um, the absolute value of, in other words, right? I'm ultimately saying, sorry, I made this a little bit more complicated. There's nothing wrong with what I just wrote, but I dragged it out a little bit more than I needed to. But I believe the answer is six feet, right? From t equals three, to t equals five, he's just cruising on his way from negative four to two. So he's just traveling six is his distance. And even if he'd be traveling the other way, we would say his distance is six. Please stop me if you disagree with that. And I apologize that I made that longer, but that's the answer is six feet. Let me, we've got one minute. Let me just see if I have time for the next one or not. One. That was. Yeah, okay, we can, the next answer is exactly the same. I'm just gonna say, and we'll pick up from here next time. Like question two, the displacement. Well, displacement by definition equals x minus x naught, which in this case, it's exactly the same. It is um, four minus minus two, which equals six feet. In other words, if he had gone back in the other direction, we would say that displacement is negative, but since he happens to be going in the positive direction, the, so in this case, the displacement and the distance were exactly the same. Not that interesting, but that's just where we are now. I'm gonna end there. Oh, and that's, oh my God, excuse me. Okay, no, I'm gonna take that. Um, okay, that is, we're gonna stop right there. If you, and we're gonna pick up a week from today, I guess. Again, if I post any new homework, just do it if you're up to it and don't if you're not, but do something. Um, you can go. Thank you guys very much. You can go. I'm going to hang out just in case there's any questions or anything, but thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Have a great rest of the day to you too. Yes. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And Farouk, question, Farouk. Yeah. I'm um, sorry. I just wanted to ask a question about the, uh, the, the process you just told us about the acronym 